This episode of Tape Facts is sponsored by Blando's. <coughs> the least exciting cereal money can buy. I am indifferent about this product. Can I go home now? Venerated viewers, I valiantly vouch this visionary videographic vignette on Vanadium is a veritable vortex of violently vexatious verbosity. Ha! 13 Vs in one sentence, not too clever now, are ya, Alan Moore? Vanadium is the first member of the Group 5 elements, and is best known for adopting a wide variety of oxidation states. In the ground state, vanadium has five electrons up for grabs in its 3d and 4s orbitals, and there's a lot of easy ways electrons can be added or pinched from its valence shells. Outside of the ground state, seven oxidation states for vanadium have been reported in the literature, but plus five, plus four, plus three, and plus two are the most readily accessible. As is typical for transition metal ions, vanadium compounds are often brightly coloured in solution, and the colour will change depending on the oxidation state of the metal, or whether it's been tampered by a rascally cartoon fox. You can show vanadium's wide range of oxidation states with an elegant designed experiment called the Vanadium Rainbow. Got a nice musical ring to it, that. Lead guitarist from 70s rock band Vanadium Rainbow named in the Epstein Island flight logs. If you dissolve ammonium vanadate in acid, you'll form a yellow solution with vanadium in the plus 5 oxidation state. As you add stronger and stronger reducing agents, the solution will turn blue for plus 4, then green for plus 3, and finally purple for plus 2. One thing that can sometimes throw people off with this experiment is the solution will often turn green between plus 5 and plus 4, because there's equal amounts of yellow V5 plus ion and blue V4 plus ions in solution. But you know, it's like they say on Sesame Street. Blue and yellow gives green, red and yellow gives orange, and green and orange gives you a chance to mercilessly bully the colorblind. On its own, vanadium metal doesn't have many uses, but it's invaluable as an alloying component in steel. Vanadium steel is strong, rust resistant, and has high tensile strength, making it an excellent material for the overpriced saws they sell to men with very normal opinions on giving women the right to vote. Blades made of Damascus steel, the inspiration for Valerian steel in Game of Thrones, were coveted in antiquity for their sharpness and strength, strength that was only possible due to vanadium impurities and the iron ore. Depending on the number of layers used to make the blade, Damascus chef's knives can sell for upwards of $5,000, but vanadium alloys aren't just good for chopping tomatoes or stabbing white walkers in the ghoulies, no sir. Vanadium steel steel was a major structural component of the Ford Model T, the first car to ever enter mass production. Industrialist slash engineer slash philanthropist slash raving Nazi sympathising nutcase Henry Ford was something of a material science nut, and he would go on record saying that the Model T Ford would have been impossible without vanadium steel. Vanadium steel wasn't that common in 1900s America, but nothing but the best would do for the Aryan supercar of the future. The earliest versions of the Model T had a top speed of 45 miles an hour, rattled uncomfortably over dirt roads, and handled about as well as a Shetland pony with cement blocks where its hooves should be. But what gave the Model T its killer edge was its price. The cars of the early 20th century were bespoke items for the rich, and were lovingly crafted by small teams of engineers. Problem is, skilled workers took years to train, and had leverage to ask for higher wages. So what if we took one complicated job, like making an engine, and split it up into ten really streamlined jobs? Jobs so quick and repetitive that any random Johnny on the street could be trained to do them in about five minutes for pennies on the dime. Then, I don't know, the guys being paid to assemble the item in question could stand in positions at a motorised conveyor belt. A line of sorts, if you will. Then you can sit back relax and watch cash flow in and severed hands flow out. For better or worse, the creation of the assembly line was an invention that changed society as profoundly as the light bulb, the printing press, and Kellogg's Crunchy Nut Cornflakes. Goods that took days to make could now be made in hours. Ford was able to sell Model Ts at a profit for only $300, about four months' salary for the average worker at the time. Even today, factories around the world haven't changed things that much from Ford's original approach. I mean, the equipment's a bit better and the CEOs are less racist. Well, less openly racist. Well, look, he's not racist, okay? He just really likes cars cartoon frogs. Vanadium was discovered by the Spanish chemist Andres Manuel del Rio, author of the first ever mineralogy textbook printed in Spanish. Del Rio received his undergraduate degree when he was only 15 years old, and his work was so impressive the Spanish crown gave him a full scholarship to study abroad. Del Rio continued his scientific education in England, Germany, and most importantly, France, then home to perhaps the greatest chemist in history, Antoine Lavoisier. Unfortunately, Del Rio's studies came to an abrupt halt in 1793, when the people of France came to two conclusions. One, the Anshan regime and bourgeois academics were out, and two, liberté, égalité, and chopping people's heads off were in. Del Rio barely escaped with his life to England by disguising himself as a water carrier. Lavoisier would not be as lucky and would be captured by revolutionaries for a wicker basket haircut. In 1794, Del Rio took a job as a professor of mineralogy at a mining college in Mexico, then part of the Viceroy of New Spain. It was here in 1801 that Del Rio took to studying lead ores, particularly a compound known as brown
brown lead, more commonly known these days as vanadinite. After experimentation, brown lead yielded lead sulfate and a mysterious compound that formed a wide variety of coloured salts, particularly those of a pleasant red colour when heated or treated with acid. Del Rio named the new element erythronium after the Greek for red, but the name didn't stick, because Del Rio was gaslit by other chemists into thinking the metal was simply an impure sample of chromium. 29 years after Del Rio announced its findings, the Swedish chemist Nils Gabriel Sestrom discovered a new element while investigating impurities in iron ore. Yeah, vanadium is one of those awkward elements that wasn't content with only being discovered once. Sestrom christened the element vanadium after Vanadis, an alternate name for Freya, the Norse goddess of beauty, fertility, and that special sort of grown-up hog I can't say on YouTube without getting royally hugged by the algorithm. In time, Sefstrom's name stuck, and it was confirmed that Sefstrom and Del Rio were both the discoverers of the same element. In the dull, monochrome deserts of the natural world, vanadium compounds stand out as beautiful oases of colour. As a chemist, it's easy to get sick of white powders, colourless liquids, black tars. Ooh, white powder suspended in a colourless liquid, daring today, aren't we? Look, I don't know, I just like it when compounds don't look like they were designed by the pixies from the fairly odd parents. To summarise, vanadium compounds add a much-needed touch of colour to the periodic table, which I'm sure Henry Ford would have appreciated. Right, Ford? Ford? Wait, what are you doing with those bedsheets, Ford? <laughs>